So this one should go pretty fast. This is just the oblique C-spine. <clears throat> I'm not making you guys critique much. Again, if you're one of my class student people. Um, but I'm not making you guys critique much on this as far as what should be seen, what shouldn't be seen. Um, it's not done quite as frequently. I'd rather have us focus on the ones that we're doing quite often. However, I do want to run through what you would see differences-wise, because it's not too bad once you think about it as far as perspective of the other projections that you should already know. So first things first, with your oblique C-spine, the anatomy of interest is always going to be your inner verge vertebral foramina, or your IVF. I refer to them as IVF because it's easier and quicker to say, and I fumble my words too often. So, quick just reminder rundown. In your AP oblique projections of the C-spine, you see the IVF farthest from the image receptor, and in your PA oblique projections, you see the IVF closest to the image receptor. So what that means is when you're in AP oblique LPO position, and remember, LPO means that it's the left side of your patient's body against the image receptor. So the first letter of that stands for the side. The second is the anterior or posterior part, and then it's just oblique, so the rotation. So LPO, left posterior side is touching the board. Since in AP, we see the side farthest from the image receptor, that means we're going to see the elevated side's inner vertebral foramina. So the right side's inner vertebral foramina would be shown in an LPO projection. For RPO, with the right posterior portion of the patient's body against the image receptor, the left side's going to be farthest from the image receptor. And again, since in AP, we see the, the inner vertebral foramina or the IVF farthest from the IR, you're going to see the left IVF in your right RPO position, okay? PA oblique, your rule switches. And one thing I tell my students is that 99% of the time in x-ray, anything that you do in AP, the exact opposite is true in PA. So again, what I mean by that is, if in AP, we saw the inner vertebral foramina farthest from the image receptor, since we're going PA now, the exact opposite is true, so we're going to see the IVF closest to the image receptor, okay? So in PA oblique, you are going to see the IVF closest. In LAO, again, that just stands for the left side of the patient's body, the anterior surface, so the front of them, will be touching the IR. And in that scenario, since you are looking for the IVF closest to the image receptor, in LAO, you're going to see your left inner vertebral foramina. Next step, RAO. So in that scenario, you're still in PA. Right anterior side is touching the IR. That means you're going to see the right IVF because, again, the right side's against the board, so that's the closest to the IR. Okay? A couple of quick facts about the oblique C-spine, just in case you forgot. Uh, oblique C-spines are done at 72 inches. Again, remember, in our C-spine, the second we turn out of AP position, we go to 72. So any of the AP projections, AP, Fuchs, open mouth, they'll be done at 40. As soon as we start rotating that patient's body, though, we go to 72 inches, okay? The second part of that is, this is an axial oblique, so we have an angle on our CR. For our oblique C-spine, we have a 15 to 20 degree angle cephalic if it's an AP and caudal if it's in PA. What is that identical to? Your AP axial. So that kind of helps with studying. Your AP axial and your axial obliques have the same angle. And again, in AP, it's cephalic, and in PA, it's caudal, okay? 45 degree patient rotation to visualize those IVFs. And that's pretty much the basics. So now your image analysis, the whole point of you being on this video, I was gonna say page, but hopefully not, there's other uh, decent stuff. Uh, but this specific video is how do I know that I've rotated enough or not enough if I've taken my image already? So forgive the drawings, I am not an artist, not even close to one. So I did my best, bear with. In our 45 degree oblique, you will see the inner vertebral foramina open and you will see medium sized vertebral bodies. 
And that's something that's not going to make sense until you look at a bunch of correct and incorrect pictures, but it's good to know for comparison purposes to give you a guideline or a starting point that they'll be kind of in the middle as far as size goes when you compare them to the over and under rotated. Okay, so the other thing here is if you can see part of the skull in the mandible, the mandible is going to be slightly foreshortened because it's going to be at that 45 degree oblique and you will have a little bit of the occipital in view as well. So it's going to be a little bit of a foreshortened cranium, but you will see it at that 45 in a little bit of a prominent position or in profile a little bit as far as the ramai goes, but just rotate it a bit, okay? And then again, your IVF will be open and easy to identify, okay? Your spinous processes are also slightly in view, but they usually look really short and stubby because of the overlap that they have by only being in that 45 degree oblique, okay? That should make sense because if I'm working with a skeleton, you're going to see the spinous processes fully in profile when I'm in lateral. And as I rotate to PA, I'm going to see less and less of them as they overlap different portions of that vertebral body. Okay, because in AP we see none and in lateral we see all of it, so 45 you're going to see partial. Okay, so comparing the 45 to the under rotation. Starting with that one, and again, here's my terrible drawing for under rotation. This is the mandible here, and the little occipital piece here. The vertebral bodies are going to be wider than they were in the 45 degree oblique because they're going to be closely mimicked to an AP. AP is under rotation. Anything between zero degrees rotation and under 45 degrees rotation is an under rotated oblique C-spine. So typically, again, if you can see any part of the cranium or mandible, the mandible will look a little bit closer to AP position. You might be able to actually see the um, mandibular um, protuberance or mentum, whatever your group calls it. And the bodies are wider in the IVF. Sometimes can still be seen, but they're really obscure. They might just be like a really skinny little line like that instead of a nice open circle. Okay. In over rotation, again, drawing my best, we have the skull and you have the vertebral bodies lined up. The head will look like it's in true lateral because again, 45 to 90, that's going to be over rotation. You'll see that mandibular rami now come full into profile. If you can see it all, a lot of times it will clip before you get to the edge, but you'll see it much longer than it should be. The vertebral bodies are smaller from that side view. And the biggest thing to look for that I think is the most helpful is you will start to see those Z joints that live between the superior and inferior articular processes. And your spinous processes, again, will be more in profile. But again, specifically those Z joints Z joints are something that we look for in our lateral position. So if you're able to see those Z joints, that should be an indicator for you that your patient was over rotated. Again, in this picture, sometimes you can still kind of see um, the IVF, but they oftentimes just look like really skinny lines going down. They don't have that nice rounded IVF that you should see in a true 45 degree oblique. So just to summarize real quick, in the 45, you're going to have medium-sized vertebral bodies, nice open IVF, and under rotation, wider vertebral bodies. If you can see the cranium, the mandible, and the skull will look a little bit more closely relatable to an AP position, obscured inner vertebral foramina, or IVF, and then an over rotation, smaller vertebral bodies, the cranium, if you can see it, or the mandible, if you can see it, will be closer to a lateral position. And the big indicator here, again, is you can start to see those Z joints come into view, and those spinous processes look long and in profile, okay?